Hello, Captain Camp. Hello, Bill. Say, the Border Patrol boys are giving a little party for my brother. I wonder if you fellas can play that happy birthday to you. Sure. When do you want it? I'll have Joe signal when Doug gets here. We're right over there. Okay, Captain. We'll go right into it. Thanks a lot. John sure devoted a whole lot of his life to his kid brother. Yeah, but spoiled. Now I suppose Camp will have him in his patrol. He wouldn't last a week. Oh, that. yes, he would. He's a good flyer. Yes, but a show off. Doug wouldn't like regulations. He wants an audience. You signal to me and then to Bill Fleck. He'll start the music. All right, Captain. Uh, don't let him run out. <laughs> Boom, you pretty creature. <laughs> you nearly set me into a spin. Well, come on back down there and tell me. How are you fixed the steady company? I'm doing all right. I caught myself a flock of eagles. Eagles? Look more like canaries to me. They're bluebirds, Smarty. Why don't you join them? Maybe I will, as soon as I can get some bird seed. John wired me to meet him here. He flew up from the border to celebrate something or other. You've got a swell brother. That's right. How about me? Mm, you're pretty swell yourself. Well-headed. Oh, is that so? Hey, listen. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Now, if you're very careful and play your cards just right, you can get me. Check. Check. Hello, Mr. Taylor. How are you, Doug? That was some beautiful flying you did yesterday. That's a beautiful ship of yours. Well, you'll have to thank Chet for that. Kid's gonna get a bang out of this. I'll bet he will. We'll say your brother's waiting. Thanks. Oh, here he comes now. All sing happy birthday to you when I drop my hand. Blackbird got together. I guess they must mean me. Well, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, if my brother were giving that party, I might figure that way. Very good, my dear Watson. Birds of a feather and all that sort of lot. Cheerio, Angel. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, how are you? <laughs> John, you old son of a gun, what's the meaning of this? Well, I always wanted you to meet the gang, and your birthday gave me a good excuse. Major Bowles, I want you to meet my brother Doug. Doug, oh, yeah, do mighty glad to know you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, how do you do? How do you do? Sit down, boy. Down, Ladies and gentlemen, that impromptu reception you just joined in was occasioned by the birthday of young Douglas Kent, brother of Captain John Kent of the Flying Patrol, who with his men flew 150 miles here tonight to uh, join this birthday party in honor of this grand little flyer. Doug, the cat fall bids you welcome and many happy returns. Everybody, come on, let's give a big Nice to that boy. Oh, I'm nice to everybody. How about giving me a break? Take it up with your wife. Please, please, please. Come on, come on, come on. Unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that reminds me of a story. Is that uh -oh. awesome? <laughs> well, a couple of fellows met on the street, and one fellow said to the other, I hear that you were in Chicago last year, and you made a million dollars in the lumber business. Uh -oh. <laughs> Well, the other fellow said, you're right, except for one thing. In Chicago, it was Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't the lumber business, it was the jewelry business. <laughs> that, and it wasn't a million dollars, it was 500,000. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't make it, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, Doug, how does that story remind you about this? Well, you see, yesterday was my birthday. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Duval and Treg. Internationally famous dancers from the Cafe de Paris. Take it away, boys. All right, here we go.
Now I'll tell one. Now this is a fact. When I was overseas one morning, a pal of mine went out with an observer in an old subway. When he reached about 2,000 feet, he threw the crate into a loop. The observer fell out, not being prepared. My pal saw his boy heading down without a chute, so he dove the plane and picked him up on the wing. And that's the gospel truth. What do you think, John? Would you believe that one? Well, it's a fact. Yeah, I've heard that yarn before. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. But I'd say it was theoretically possible. A falling body would reach a certain speed and maintain it after the first plunge. So if a pilot started soon enough, he could dive his plane faster than the falling man. Well, it's true anyway. gentlemen, we are dedicating this next number to Doug Kent, whose birthday we're celebrating tonight. A bit of a high-flying bird himself. All right, boys. <clears throat> There's a call for you, Mr. Kent. Thanks. Excuse me, fellas. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. Birthday, old timer. Thanks. How are you, Teddy? Fine. How about a little bit? No fashion, please. Make it through. I bought you a little present. No. Mm hmm. I know you've gotten a lot of nice things, but I hope you like this. Nothing could be half as nice as a present from you, Teddy. Cute. Teddy, it's well. I'm glad you like it. Here, let me put it on for you. Don't be careful. Gee, Teddy, I'm nuts about you. What would your brother think of that? I don't suppose he approves of you and me. He's got nothing to do with it. I'm making my own way. Well, hello, Marion. John married you off to Doug yet? Isn't he a scream? I don't know whether to kiss him or to kill him. Well, you could do worse. I don't know. Doug's a nice kid, though. <clears throat> Too flighty. Oh, he wrote me about me. I feel better about it. Well, maybe you're right. The way you can fly, you should be as famous as Hawk, Turner, or any of them. If I had a good, fast plane, I'd be on the front pages of every newspaper in the country. I suppose you'd forget all about me then. I'll never forget you, Teddy. I'll forget it. We're just blowing bubbles. They don't have to be bubbles. No? Well, maybe you can tell me how I can buy expensive planes. I can, maybe. Go ahead. I'm listening. A friend of mine could use a good flower like you, and it'd pay well. I believe Doug has forgotten us. I'll look him up. Well, here he comes now. You're a fine guest of honor, walking out on your friend. Sorry, fellas, but it was a long-distance call. <laughs> Here from Morley? They're on their way. There's a slight fog southwest, clear, ceiling unlimited. Standing by for plane 14 to report. Go ahead, plane 14. That's the air patrol. Plane 14 reporting. Over Kyle Wells, flying due west, altitude 2500, bright moonlight. Wait a minute. Ship flying without lights. 
Just saw him as he crossed the moon. I'm going to investigate. He's flying north. Okay, plane 14. We'll stand by. Think that's check? Sounds like it. I don't think that patrol ship can catch him. Hello, George. Plane 14 calling. Go ahead, plane 14. I got above the fellow with signal for him to land. Instead, he's gunning it. Don't know if I can catch him, but I'm on his tail. Better send up a couple of ships and head him off. I want to see him. Boy, that was close. Too close. You're too fast on the trigger, Chet. You'll get us all to jam. You see that? Romero stopped those. Shooting down a border ship. You know what that means? Yeah, it means that I'm still alive. Get this, Favor. I'm doing the flying, and I'm doing it my own way. Well, we can't talk here. Come with my office and get through. First phone to the right, sir. Oh, thanks. Hello? Yes? What? We'll take off right away. Came in, there was one. 40 years now. There's a call from the field, sir. Some runner got jammed. We're ordered to take the air immediately and double back toward the border. Sorry, Doug, I've got to shove off. Can't tell when I get back. Well, that's all right, John. I'll stick around here a while. All right, take Marion home. Oh, here are a couple of tickets for a show. I was going with Joe, but will you take Marion? Do I have to take Marion? Well, I thought maybe you'd like to. She's a swell kid. Bonnets and don't spare the horses. Sure, there must be something in the air. Well, if there isn't, somebody's scooping. That's what I'm saying. Come on, Say, I have to step in double, Jake, to keep him out of trouble. Stone, take the coast route. Yeah, Brown, cover the desert. Howard, Wilkes, Spangler, cover the rocky south and east. I'll take the Sierras.
Give me a stiff drink, Joe. A meeting of the mines? No. When men meet, I'm the mine. Yeah, well, get this favor. Fly in my department and you keep out of it. You've been acting with a pretty high hand, Chet, and I don't like it. Yeah, well, like it or not, while you're sitting here on your haunches, I'm out taking all those chances. And you're making more money than you ever had in your life. If you haven't got the nerve to stick with this thing, what'd you start it for? Wait a minute, Chet. We're in this together. Favor means we can't afford to lose Romero. He was the right guy. Say, it might have been me, and I'm not squawking. Besides, I'm covered. Well, I'm glad it wasn't you. But we've got to get a flyer to replace Romero. It's practically in the bag. Wait a minute. I had a hunch. Don't tell me you're waiting for a streetcar. You're on the wrong line, Mr. Morley. Come in. The leaves dropping, favor. Why were you listening at the door? I wasn't listening. Then what were you doing? I was looking for Teddy Blaine. Why? Because I had a message. Doug Kent wants to see her. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? In the first place, I couldn't get in. In the second place, those gorillas were nothing. In the third place, you didn't seem interested. And in the fourth place, I didn't care whether or not I gave you the message in the first place. You know, I've been having Teddy give that Doug Kent the build-up for weeks. That kid's a great flyer. And beside that, he's John Kent's brother, head of the Border Patrol. It'd be a great break if we can get him with us. Plane 18, plane 18, calling plane 18. Harbor Junction. Plane reported heard in difficulty above the clouds at 11 p.m. That is all. Thirteen, fifteen, twenty-two. X twenty calling plane. Thirteen, fifteen, twenty-two. X twenty calling. Passing 
right point, going to into the valley, lying low. Proceed to Salton Sea, plane reported cracked up shortly after midnight. Calling plane 19. Plane 19. Captain Kent near Poison Springs in the Sierra. No luck. Any instructions? A prospector at Poison Springs reported two planes flying north at 11 p.m., three minutes before Jimmy's radio quit. I'll make a thorough search of all canyons in the vicinity and report later. Plane 19 reporting. Go ahead, Plane 19. Located track up and wash 10 miles due north of Poison Springs. Impossible to land. We'll circle above the wreck until ground crew arrives. This is? Why, that's the dancer at the cat's paw. Well, after I left the wreck of Jimmy's ship, I spotted a dead man on the desert near the wells. And you took this picture from him? Yes, he was carrying a lot of lead from someone's machine gun. Well, Jimmy must have hit him. Exactly. And I figured a pilot of that ship couldn't land with a dead man, so he rolled over and dropped him out. No, that's cold-blooded. Any idea who it was? According to his pilot's license, his name was Romero. Romero? Have you heard from Doug? Why, yes, he called early this evening. Said he had a business and get down at the cat's paw. Oh. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to fly up there. I want to ask some questions. Well, I wish you luck. Thanks, Major. So all you have to do is take that plane, fly across the border, pick up a man, and fly back. That's a lot of money for a short hop. Well, why not, as long as you're a good enough pilot? Nobody pays that kind of money for straight flying. What's his racket? Listen, sugar. You fly and he pays. Right.
How's tricks? I think I'm holding a losing hand. Doug is in there now trying to finesse. Well, I'll go in and see that he plays according to Hoyle. All right. Uh -uh. I don't think I'll go for it. Why don't you have a talk with Chet? You wait right here and I'll get you. Hello, John. So that's your big business deal, is it? Hello, baby. How's things? Listen, Doug's got a case of cold feet. We gotta have that kid. With his brother on the patrol, it's a perfect setup. I've tried everything. But you told me he was crazy about you. Don't worry, he is. Maybe you haven't given him the right business. Listen, big boy. I know my business all right, and it isn't hardware. I want you to have a talk with him. Okay, baby. I'll be out in a few minutes. Oh, uh, Teddy, this is my brother John. John. How do you do? Teddy Blaine. Teddy's trying to get me a job with a friend of hers. You don't have to get a job. I've got one ready for you. John, I'm not a kid anymore. I've grown up. I've got a lot of big ideas. And they don't include any small change, such as working for your border patrol. I want to make money, lots of money. I'm going to be somebody one of these days. Uh, look, Doug, do me a favor, will you? I forgot to report to the patrol. Will you call them and tell them I'm at the cat's ball? Oh, sure. I'll be right back. Oh, Miss Blaine, uh, do you know a man by the name of Romero? Romero? No, I don't remember the name. Why? Well, Romero was killed last night in a fight with one of my men, who later crashed. The pilot of the plane that uh, Romero was riding in deliberately spilled him on the desert to get rid of his body. What's that got to do with me? Well, he was carrying this. He must have thought a great deal of you to carry your picture. That's, that's one of my professional pictures. I've given away hundreds of them. Well, do they all have this inscription on them? How do I know? Anyway, what business is it of yours? Well, the plane that Romero was thrown out of crossed the border last night without reporting. That's your business, Copper. Just a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Take it easy, kid. I'll get rid of him. You keep your mouth shut and nobody will know anything about this. Teddy, 
Take them down the back way. Go on. National Anthem, boys. Joe, I want you to leave town for a while. You're going to be officially dead. What's the idea? Never mind. Scram out of here. Lay low and don't let anybody see you. You'll hear from me later. Any mail from me, Major? No, I don't believe so, John. I wonder why I haven't heard from the kid. Why haven't you heard at all? No, not since the night we had the free for all of the cat's paw. Oh, don't worry. He'll be all right. I suppose so. He probably hasn't had time to write yet. Hello, Captain. It's for you. Oh, thanks. Hello? Yes? This is Stevens. That car just passed through with a propeller. All right. Well, that was Stevens at the border reporting. If I need any help, I'll radio in. Have any trouble? Nah, came right under the custom officer's nose. I don't like this, Molly. What are you squawking about? Grant took all the chances crossing the line. That makes your job pretty soft. He's coming down. Well, let him come down. Keep on working, Grant. Dog. Hello, John. Gee, I'm glad to see you, kid. What are you doing? Why, I... I'm flying for Mr. Morley. Morley? Yeah. Hiya, Kent. Say, I'm sorry about that rumpus the other night. I didn't know Doug was your brother. Forget it. Nobody was killed. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'm glad there's no hard feelings, Kent. What's the matter with the prop? Out of balance. Molly has them specially made. Come on, Doug. We have to get out of here. I hope this prop won't give us any more trouble. That prop's going to give you a lot more trouble. Take it off, Doug. Wait a minute, Kent. Your brother's in this as deep as I am. Don't believe him, Keep John. Keep your mouth shut. Wait a minute!
Come on, we got to get out of here. What about this copper? Don't worry about him. Get him in the plane. I'll get rid of him. Take with you, and I'll meet you at the hangar. X-20, 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 plane 18 calling X-20. X-20, 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 plane 18 calling X-20. Go ahead, plane 18. Plane 18 reporting. Gunfight, Indian Wells, Bond shot, Molly escaped. Have positive proof on gang. Get Faber, Saunders, Teddy Blaine, two strong arm men, Morrison and Duncan at Cat's Paw nightclub. Act quickly. Molly may tip off by radio. That's all.
Calling car 357, 357. Proceed to Cat's Paw Cafe and assist government operative there. Hurry. That is all. Calling car 209, 209, go to the Cat's Paw Cafe, report to Department of Justice operative, that is all. <laughs> Calling car 57. Proceed to Cat's Park Cafe and assist government operative there. Hurry, that is all. <laughs> Calling car 123. Car 123. Cat's Park Cafe. This is an emergency call. Hurry. <laughs> due for a knockover. They've been getting away with murder. Oh, Mr. Faber. What is it? Two gentlemen in the rear want to know if you'd be interested in some beautiful bracelets. Probably want to hop them. Tell Duncan to bring my examining glass. You the gentleman with the bracelets? Yeah. Well, let's have a look at them. It'll be a pleasure. Here's a glass. Where's the ornaments? Faber's in the back room, trying them on. Uh, what does he know about jewelry? Maybe I can get in on this. Hey, boss. Here's the glass. How much do you think we ought to get on them bracelets? About 20 years. I just saw Duncan carrying his examining glass. What's he doing? They're getting ready to examine a pile of rocks. If there are any rocks around here, little pity will get her share. Where is that pile of rocks Marion was telling me about? Up the river, lady. Up the river. Come on, let's go.
We have with us tonight the federal operatives who, in conjunction with the Border Patrol, broke up and brought to justice the Morley Gang. It gives me great pleasure to introduce my old acquaintance and our distinct guest, Captain John Kent of the Border Patrol. And now, a young married couple who have worked together on many famous cases and are celebrating their anniversary with us here tonight, Mr. and Mrs. Douglas Kent of the Department of Justice. Thank you. 